which is 7,600 feet, was, uh, uh, came up uh, from the ocean. On my own property that's about 2,000 feet up, not on a mountainside, you can find uh, limestone, which of course is, is being generated um, um, by uh, living creatures in coral reefs. And within the limestone, you can find clams and other kinds of marine creatures. And in some cases, you can find ones that don't exist now. In fact, if you study the whole structure of the area I live in, you see repeated areas of limestone, uh, just as you would expect if the earth was rising. And as it first comes above the water, you've got these coral reefs forming. And then as it continues to rise, those coral reefs are above water, they dry out and uh, become limestone. Thank you. Dr. Holden? OK, here's a public school textbook saying, climbers reaching the top of Mount Everest plant their victory flags over the remains of animals that once lived in the sea. It's a simple fact that the top 3,000 feet of Mount Everest is indeed full of sedimentary rock loaded with seashells. Here's an article from the paper uh, last year, two years ago. Um, paleontologist, whatever his name is here, rests on a giant fossil oyster found in Peru. Uh, more than 500 giant fossil oysters were found two miles above sea level some of which are 11 and a half feet wide and 661 pounds. Well, interesting, these oysters are in the closed position. Petrified clams in the closed position are found all over the world, including the top Mount Everest. Now, when a clam dies, it opens. You can walk along the beach and find a billion seashells. You hardly ever find a matched pair, and you don't find them closed if they're dead. They open, the muscle relaxes, it's just a natural response. So I think the best explanation of petrified clams, and sometimes they're found up to 10 feet thick, solid petrified clams, jammed in there, closed and petrified. To me, it's not a problem. The flood would have underwater, what are called turbidity currents, mudslides underwater move incredibly fast. There was one turbidity current that cut the transatlantic cable years ago. They said it had to move 70 miles an hour underwater, the mud flow. I think during the flood in the days of Noah, you would get incredible turbidity currents that would bury beds of clams, and when they wake up dead, they can't open. And so they end up getting petrified. And then the Bible says in Psalm 104, the mountains arose, the valley sank down, and uh, the petrified clams on top of Mount Everest are absolutely no problem for my worldview. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. Next question is for Ken Hoven, Dr. Ken Hoven. Please explain the assumptions in carbon-14 data. I have about, so, who knows, five or six or 7,000 slides in my presentation. So it would really help if you ask the questions in the same order that I have the same in the answers, you know. <laughs> uh, carbon dating is based on quite a few obvious assumptions. Um, I'll give you a, a quick analogy. I covered this for an hour on video number seven if you want to get the good detail. If I asked you to fill a barrel with water, but I had drilled holes in the barrel. While you're filling it, it's leaking. At some point, you're going to reach a stage called equilibrium. You can't fill it past that point unless you speed up the intake or cut down the outgo. The atmosphere is receiving carbon-14. It's actually being manufactured by radiation striking nitrogen, and it's turning it into carbon-14, which is a radioactive isotope, unstable, lasts 5,730 years, according to most uh, scientists. Well, at some point, the Earth's atmosphere would have to reach equilibrium. If, if you just created a brand new planet Earth, stuck it out there, poof, got it spinning around the sun. Willard Libby did quite a bit of study on this. He invented carbon dating. And they said it would take about 30,000 years for the atmosphere to reach equilibrium. In other words, it's create, being created and being destroyed simultaneously. So within 30,000 years, the atmosphere would equalize. Then Willard Libby said, well, we know the Earth is millions of years old, mistake number one. Therefore, we can ignore the equilibrium problem, mistake number two. Earth's atmosphere has still not reached equilibrium. Radiocarbon is forming 28 to 37 percent faster than it's decaying. Carbon dating is an excellent proof the Earth is less than 30,000 years old, probably much less than 30,000 years old. Uh, when you go to date animals to test their age with carbon dating, you get really wild numbers. I don't have time to go through all the other assumptions based on like the rate of burn, et cetera. Uh, but I can just give you a few examples showing you that it doesn't work. Living mollusk shells, carbon dated 2,300 years old. Freshly killed seal, carbon dated 1,300 years old. Shells from living snails, carbon dated 27,000 years old. This guy said, if a carbon date supports our theories, we put it in the main text. If it does not entirely contradict them, we put it in a footnote. If it's completely out of date, we just drop it. Um, here's, uh, this guy says, no matter how useful it is, the radiocarbon method is still not capable of yielding accurate and reliable results. There are gross discrepancies. The chronology is uneven and relative, and the accepted dates are actually selected dates. 
The whole blessed thing is nothing but 13th century alchemy. It all depends upon which funny paper you read. Here's one part of a mammoth, 29,000 years old, another part's 44,000, same animal. That's a slow birth. 30 seconds. This, well, we could talk here a long time, uh, geologic column, uh, no, here's, okay. The lower leg of a mammoth dated 15,000 years old, the skin was 21,000. It just doesn't work. I'm sorry, it doesn't work, thank you. Dr. Trivers. Yes, I'll just simply urge you who are interested in the latest set of lies from A Liar for Jesus, go to www.talkorigins.org and that'll give you references also uh, to the literature that he's uh, very selectively and in some cases uh, grossly and accurately referring to. I don't have any more uh, to say about that. Question for Dr. Trivers. As a scientist myself, I would like to hear evolution's explanation for trees that stick vertically up through many sedimentary layers that evolution says were deposited over millions of years. Uh, I don't know the phenomenon you're referring to. Fossil? Oh, oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. He doesn't know a phenomenon, but I'm honest. That's all I got to say. I don't know the phenomenon he's referring to. All right, I do understand the phenomena, and I'm honest too, and I resent being called a liar tonight. I'd like you to be specific if you have another lie. Give me one at a time, and I'll handle it. You're a liar when you say no one has found a single beneficial mutation. You're a liar when you're Dr. saying Trivers, that someone with a beneficial mutation has to someone else with a beneficial mutation. That's a specific example. That's two examples. We will get back to that if time permits. Uh, I would like to this beneficial mutation. The textbooks will teach the kids that the layers of strata are different ages. This is taught uniformly all over the world that the layers are different ages. And yet all over the world, in Germany, France, British Isles, Nova Scotia, California, and several eastern states, petrified trees are found in the vertical position running through multiple rock layers. Yellowstone has 27 consecutive layers of these trees at Specimen Ridge. Standing trees in the petrified, petrified trees in the standing position, running through multiple rock layers, is proof positive the layers are not millions of years different in age. In central Alabama, there's a large coal field right there. You can talk to Dr. McDonald, who's a geologist who works there in that coal field, and he will show you dozens of petrified trees that were found standing up, running through multiple rock layers. The kids have been taught for years that the Blue Creek and the Mary Lee Formation are different ages, and yet when you put all the fossils together, you get sample A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you can prove positively those layers formed quickly. Uh, petrified trees 30 feet tall found in Cookville, Tennessee, standing up. Joggins, Nova Scotia is famous for its petrified trees in the vertical position. They're called polystrata fossils. Why students are taught, why people are allowed to teach that each of those rock strata are a different age, I don't know, but they are not. It is not common sense. Um, sometimes the trees are upside down running through many rock layers. Well, they you? are not, the rock layers are not different ages, but the whole theory of evolution rests on the assumption that the geologic column is accurate. And that was proven, that was developed by Charles Lyell and others back in the 1830s, way before there ever was a carbon dating, asking argon dating, or iridium strontium dating, or any other thing else. Okay? Okay, next. <laughs> 